Hi and welcome. In this video today, I'm going to show you how to use the Victron ESS and why it shouldn't be used off grid. And if you're off grid and you want to know how to use it, when you get towards at the end of the video, I'm going to show you the long way around of how to use ESS. And then at the end, I'm going to show you a quick tip of how to use it really quickly from this dashboard here. So let's get into it. Now, if you stand in front of your screen, you're going to see this screen here. Now, Victron has a few different screens that you can actually look for from here. So from the computer, I personally love doing everything from the computer. Like my screen is literally right here to the right of me. So I like to use a computer. Now you've got a couple of different options to have a look at here. Now if you hit escape twice, it's going to change the screen. Now this is the screen a lot of people use when they're in an ESS mode, if you are using ESS. So ESS stands for Energy Storage System. Now this is more designed for grid connected customers and if you're connected to the grid, there's lots of smarts that you can do. Now here for myself, I call myself off grid because uh, that's what we do. We actually are here, we're based, we're connected to the grid. The way I like to think about it is your grid's just your generator. So it really doesn't matter what it is, it's your backup source. But ESS is really not recommended to be used in an off-grid situation. And if you are using ESS, a lot of people like to use this screen and look at it this way here. Now the next screen, this screen here that comes up here, this is really good for when you're using a generator. So if you've got a system and maybe with a Quattro, because that's the biggest difference between a MultiPlus and a Quattro is that a MultiPlus only has one AC input, where a Quattro, you have two inputs. So as an example, you can have the grid as one input in the Quattro. So from this screen here, you can actually start your generator. Now back to the home screen. This is my favorite screen to look at, and I just like the pretty colors, I suppose. Now, if you are using ESS, and what you'll see down the bottom here, if your system does change ESS modes, which it can if you've got it set up for different perimeters, you'll actually see the mode. Just come down here, what ESS system is actually running your system at the time. Now, if we just head over here, we go into our settings. Go down to ESS. Now, there's a few different modes in here, what it's got. So, optimize without battery life. We'll come in here and have a look at this. So we've got Optimize Without Battery Life, Optimize With Battery Life, and Keep Batteries Charged. Now, how I think about these three things and how I use them, now, as an example, the reason you keep your batteries charged, so if, example, there's a bad weather event coming and you want to keep your batteries charged to make sure they're fully charged, that in the case, you know, a tree falls down the power lines and you lose power, you're just not like everyone else. I remember the first time I installed batteries and thinking, yep, I've got batteries, life's going to be great. When there's a blackout, I'm never going to have a blackout. And I was using the grid as my backup. And what happened? It rained for a week. There was a blackout. And I was only a few hours behind everyone else because my batteries went flat and I didn't have a generator. So if it is 100% reliable power that you want, it's really important that you probably use a grid and a generator as a backup in these systems. That backup source, like a generator, is really, really important if you want 100% reliable power. Now, the difference between optimize with battery life and optimize without battery life. Now, I run mine optimized without battery life. What it actually does, it's designed to basically take the batteries to 0% every single day. So literally just use as much as you can. What optimized without battery life will do, it'll actually let your system run down to zero if necessary. If you use all your energy overnight, most hybrid systems when the grid's available, that's what they're designed to do because it's mainly more about a financial return where an off-grid system's about reliable, I want power, I've got no power. When, when designing an installer system, when there's the grid available for a hybrid system, most people are doing it for a financial return. So you want to get the most out of your batteries. So drain them down as much as you can. That's what Optimize Without Battery Life will do. It'll allow your system to use 100% of the battery and then go back to the grid. Now, Optimize With Battery Life, how the Optimize With Battery Life works, now think about it like this. It doesn't want to let your batteries operate down the bottom part of your battery. And it'll take a few days for this to work out because it predicts your energy usage, how you use an energy, if you're someone like me, my energy is all over the place. It really gives this setting a hard time. Energy use is all over the place because we've got electric cars. So sometimes, you know, weather's great, we'll charge. And sometimes we just get in a situation where weather's terrible. We use our batteries overnight or the grid to charge our car. Now, the optimized with battery life, what it's going to do is it'll actually try and keep your batteries topped up to that, you know, maybe about 50%, we'll say. So what it'll actually do is make sure that the next day, it tries to make sure they only get charged from a renewable energy. So if it knows your solar is only producing, say you've got a 10 kilowatt hour battery bank, and it knows your solar only produces seven kilowatt hours the next day for solar production, it'll only let your batteries drain down to that 50% mark. So it'll actually make sure that the batteries get charged the next day from renewable energy, making sure your batteries are staying up in that top 
percentage of the battery bank, not right down the bottom. If you're using your batteries right down the bottom all the time and your batteries are always like that 10, 20%, you'll get imbalances in your cells that's not good. So I highly recommend, if you're someone that doesn't have enough solar production in winter, this is where this setting's really good. It'll predict and make sure you use all your renewable energy only to charge your batteries and keep them topped up during the day. You're not operating down that 10, 20% low end of the battery where it's gonna harm the battery and bring imbalances in your cells. Other option there is an external control, which I really won't get into. Pylon Tech use this so as an example. When you plug a Pylon Tech battery in there, it'll take control of the system and deal with it. Or oh, there's a lot of other external controls you can use to control that, which we're not gonna get into this video. So I'm gonna show you another setting. We're gonna jump over here. Now, before we're gonna show you a quick setting, I turn my batteries on to keep batteries charged. I'm just gonna quickly shut that down so you can actually see. As you see from the grid here, my system starts pulling from the grid. So when you hit this setting on, it's actually gonna start charging your batteries straight away. And it's gonna get them to whatever you got set as a set point to keep those batteries topped up. Now, when we come back here to our remote console, now I'll come back in, I'll turn that off. Back down to optimize without battery life. I'll show you a few other settings and schedule charging and how I use it and how it can be useful. Now we come down here, this minimum state of charge, this is where you can actually set it to 0%. For me, I've got two systems here, the way my house works. I run this system to 0% and then what happens, it goes over to another system. But this is here, if you wanna save your batteries and say, look, I wanna keep 30% in there because if, the, if there is a grid failure, I wanna make sure I've got power, I've got backup. And that's where this really comes down to what's really important for you and what you're trying to get out of the system. I'm not gonna go into these and come down to scheduled charging. So scheduled charge, if you're connected to the grid, how I use this, and I'll explain the reason I use it. So in Australia here, we have the wholesale energy market where the prices change and they fluctuate every five minutes. And I'll show you right now, I'm on the wholesale market. So as I've buying energy from the grid right now, I'm paying 12 cents a kilowatt hour. Now, the way I use this scheduled charge, and I think it's really important, if you're someone, especially coming into winter here in Australia, you guys in the States going to summer, you'll think about this a bit of a different way. So, in winter, the way I think about it, and for us, on the weekends, I really wanna make sure my batteries are getting a good charge each week because I do drain them right down to zero all the time, like pretty much every single day, one set of batteries, and I'm actually testing these batteries is what I'm doing. I drain them down to zero all the time. So I wanna make sure these batteries every single week get a really good long charge and get a balanced charge. And for us here in Australia, on the wholesale market, so when we're using the wholesale market, so if you're interested in this stuff and you're connected to the grid, we use a pro program called Get Local Vaults, which is a peer-to-peer -peer trading program. So in the link in the description below, you go to Get Local Vaults, and you actually can buy and sell your solar on the wholesale market. Peer-to-peer, -peer, you can do prices and deals and things like that. When you're not buying from another customer on the local vaults networks, you're actually in the wholesale market. So your prices fluctuate all the time. The reason I bring that and how I use the scheduled charge is because most weekends, energy in Australia is actually free or you get paid to use it. So in Australia, we have, if you have an electric vehicle, they say between 10 and two o'clock on the weekends, you can charge your electric car for free. So what I do, as you see for 9.30, mine kicks on here. I make sure that even though I'm charging my electric car, because the way the Victron works normally, if I plug a car in or a big load, the Victron wants to minimize the energy coming from the grid. So how I use this scheduled charge in my situation is on the weekends, I make sure it's charged and flat out. Sometimes I get caught out, I pay for it, but I would say 90% of the year, I get paid to charge my batteries on the weekend. And if my car's at home, I'm actually charging my car from these scheduled charges. Now in the States, if you think about it like this, coming into summer, you guys are gonna have a lot of cheap energy and depending on your peak rates and things like that, the way you could use Victron, so actually using this scheduled charge, you don't need solar. So you could actually just install a Victron with batteries if that's reliability and forget about the solar panels. And if you know that your energy prices in the States are really cheap overnight between midnight and 6 a.m., I know some places have that, you can set these scheduled charges up to charge overnight, overnight. In the States, it's really complicated because you have so many different networks and things like that. We're in Australia. We have the largest network in the world that's connected. So for us, two thirds of our country operate on the same network. So it's really easy for us to be able to do this sort of stuff. And for us, the cheapest prices of a day when PV's out 
I'd love to hear from the comments below if anyone in the States has access to wholesale pricing and I'd look into it. It's something that we have access to here in Australia, which allows us to buy the energy when it's really cheap. And I mean really cheap. We get paid sometimes on the weekends and then use our batteries overnight in those peak periods where their prices jump through the roof and they go to 50 cents to a dollar. Now that's a few different ways that you can use scheduled charging there. I like to keep this stuff simple. There is a lot of products out there like Node Red and things like that. You can do smarts and talk to the wholesale prices and charge and discharge that sort of stuff. What I've actually found personally, the way I've said that most of the time I'm going to be okay and get the energy when it's free and there will be some times I don't, I don't win. So, but that's okay. The amount of times I get energy for free or to charge my car and my batteries from for free from the wholesale market pays for it those times that I do. Now we'll jump back to the start. I want to show you how to get all that information really quick and easy. Now this is why it's so important to have your system online on the internet. If you've got it online, you've got the app downloaded, you can actually just log onto the Victron VRM come over here in the top right hand corner and you get access to all those controls. So if you get a generator, you can actually have your generator set for an auto start functionality. You can do this time run. This is something really good I use for winter. If you're an off grid customer, the way I like to use this, generators like to be loaded up and used. So I like to say, hey Kay, get home when you're cooking dinner, turn the generator on, run it for three hours. You don't have to think about it. You can just come in here and go bang, time run, I want the generator to run for three hours and start that generator and you're in business and you don't have to think about turn it off. It'll run, you cook your dinner, do all that sort of stuff. Give the generator a good run while it's cooking dinner, it's charging batteries flat out as well. And it's gonna give you the system a really good charge in the middle of winter. Now for those ESC settings, you can come down here and you've got all that stuff where you can keep your batteries charged, optimize the battery life. And if this is something really simple to use that if there is a storm coming, you can just press it, it'll keep your batteries charged. Or you want to use this momentarily. So you think, okay, I'm someone, I only really need 50% battery capacity. I've got 30% of my batteries right now. Say there's a storm coming and you're worried you want to keep power and say, look, I only really need 50%. I don't think it's really going to be a blackout, but I want to be safe just in case there's a blackout. I want to have my minimum 50% energy to get me through the night. So all you do, if you just grab this here and start changing this up to your 50%, 45 so by changing this setting, what it'll do, it'll actually start charging your batteries and keep your batteries topped up. So it'll top them up to that 50% mark and then it'll actually turn off and stop charging. So that allows you to go, right, I'm going to have 50%. If the wet, bad weather event comes, I've only charged my batteries to 50%. What it does, it stops charging your batteries completely full and then you don't lose power. and You've actually just wasted energy charging from the grid. It's a really good setting to think about you to control your system. Now there's a lot more to Victron ESS that I didn't go into in this video. If there's something you really want to get an understanding of and learn more about this, you might be looking at this and go, hey Mike, I can't find the Victron ESS system. Victron ESS doesn't come on all the Victron inverters. Remember, Victron and the way they're designed is mainly for the off-grid market. ESS is more designed for their multi-plus twos and their multi-plus hybrid inverters that are designed to be connected to the grid. If you want to learn more and understand about this, we've created a mini course, which you can find the link in the description below. And that course is going to take you through on how to do everything with your Victron, how to program it, whether you're off-grid or on-grid, how to do all those settings from the VE configure, Victron Connect, and also understanding how to use the VRM portal and get the maximum out of it. Well, guys, I hope this has been helpful. Really appreciate it. If we've earned it, give us a like and a subscribe. If you know someone that think we get a lot out of this video, please do share it around. We'd really appreciate it. And until next time, stay energized.